What's going on guys? Today we are going to have a quick little video here on unit 8. So we are at the start of unit number last and we're going to be going over body composition here. So today for our first learning outcome it's just going to be to explain what body composition is and we're going to look at some of the different components of it and then look at a couple different models for it. So let's get right into it. So first off when we look at body composition all we're doing is trying to differentiate between the different types of tissue that are in your body. Primarily, you're going to group these into two categories, fat mass or fat free mass. Fat mass, obviously, is how much fat you have. This counts or should count your adipose tissue or you know your beer belly. Also, it should count your deep visceral tissue and any of the fat that covers like your organs. Um, you're really not going to measure, say, for example, like triglycerides or your cell membranes, which are composed of fats, just because that would essentially incorporate most all of your body. So what you're going to be looking at here primarily is that adipose tissue and the visceral fat. And then your fat-free mass is going to primarily be everything else. So all of your muscle mass, all of your bone mass, your organs, your skin, so everything else except adipose tissue is going to be counted for this. Body composition is really important to know because this is one of the big indicators of future disease risk. Depending on how much and the location of your body fat can really give a big picture on really what your metabolism looks like and also how you are doing in terms of your overall health. We also use this to differentiate body types. So if you were to just take someone's weight and height, you can end up with vastly different individuals if you didn't consider body composition. So someone here, like here, has you know six pack abs, whereas over here, it's more like a, a kegerator kind of thing. So that's where body composition comes into play. It tells us exactly what someone's body structure is without us having to really essentially be there to do that. Now, you're going to see the terms or the term body fat percentage or BF percentage. That's going to be commonly how you're going to express your body fat. And then we're going to measure these through anthropometric assessments. And we're going to go over those here in a little bit. Now, for our norms, there's really no set standard for, say, body composition norms. So depending on the source you use, you could see these numbers vary slightly. Um, according to the ACSM, or the American College of Sports Medicine, you, for men, you want to have a body fat percentage between 10 and 22 percent to be in the healthy range. For women, between 20 and 32 percent. Women are always going to have more body fat than men because women carry more body fat and they have estrogen as a major hormone for them so estrogen will cause more of a retention and a storage of body fat so women naturally are going to have more body fat than men other sources will tell you like for men that you can go up to 25 percent women to 30 percent so everything's going to vary slightly but these are roughly the figures that you want to be looking at now the other thing here is when you reach your percentage of essential fat you can never get rid of all the fat in your body if you did you would not be living the essential fat you have is the fat you need to essentially survive. This is like the fat that say surrounds your organs. This is also the fat that's essential to like say your everyday metabolic tasks. So for men your essential fat is between 2 and 5 percent and for women it's about 10 to 13 percent. So this means that you should not be dipping below those numbers because it could be really detrimental to your overall health. Now, lastly here, I want to go over just some of the, the different body composition measures you'll be using. We're going to be going into a deeper dive into this 
in the next section section here but this will just give you a brief overview of this when you're measuring body fat all of these different modalities have their pluses and minuses so the first one here I have and it's got the asterisk with it is BMI BMI stands for body mass index and I have it as an asterisk because this really isn't a measure of body composition all this is is a calculation and it's really just a height to weight ratio this is actually really accurate with determining relative health risk for sedentary individuals where it isn't so accurate is when you have essentially people that have low body fat percentages so if you have a lot of body weight but a lot of that say muscle mass so say your body fat percentage is under 10 percent for a man and your BMI could theoretically be elevated to the point where you would appear to be obese but because you know obviously you have a low body fat percentage you're not obese so that's where that BMI can really get into the the inaccurate ranges there now for the true measures of body fat percentage or body composition we have dense atometry which is your hydrostatic weighing this is considered to be your gold standard so with this what's happening here is you sit on an apparatus here and get dunked into a pool essentially it's like a chair that you just sit on and you completely submerge your body and up here is a scale and that scale will tell you your weight and your weight should only be accounting for your lean tissue because fat will float and if you go underwater you should only weigh the amount of mass that your fat free mass is because like your bone your uh, muscle mass those will all sink so that's how much you would get there one of the big drawbacks with this is that you have to essentially be completely out of breath if you have air in your lungs it's going to make you more buoyant so it's going to give you an inaccurate reading it makes this very difficult plus these scales are really finicky so if you move around at all it's going to move the meter a whole lot and you got to be kind of careful with that a skin fold test using a, a caliper here will measure different areas of your body and then based on the amount of fat that's directly under the skin and going to different areas in the body you can make a calculation of the body fat percentage this is typically going to be accurate to about two to five percent so it does have a relatively bigger margin of error but in people that are in normal body fat percentage ranges it's usually pretty accurate air displacement you'll see with the bod pod what will happen here is you get into you wear a shower cap or a swimming cap and essentially like a, a speedo type bathing suit close this up air gets blown all around you and your body fat is or your body composition is detected based on the amount of air that you displace these are really cool and they're pretty accurate but they're also very very expensive something like this would cost oh, in the low 20,000 range so you know a Christmas list right Bioelectric impedance, I don't have pictured here, but that is just measuring your body fat through electricity. You would stand on a scale or hold a handheld device and you would get a, an electrical signal sent through your body and then it comes back and you get a reading saying how much body fat you have. This is really cheap. You can buy these at Walmart for like 10 to 15 bucks. They're relatively accurate, so within 5% of a range there. The only problem is, is that they are highly variable based on your level of hydration. If you're very dehydrated, it can actually signal that you are a lot fatter than you really are. If you're very well hydrated, it can actually signal that you're thinner or have less body fat than you really are. Dual Energy X-ray Absorptometry, or DEXA. This originally has been used to measure bone density. so a lot of women use this to get a bone density measure of them but it can also be used to measure your body fat or your body composition here the way this works is that you have one x-ray up here you have a receiver end over there this goes back and forth and scans your whole body 
and then on the printout here it tells you or the computer there tells you what the relative density is of your body parts you can see the kind of there will tell you the density of the body parts there you can kind of tell how old that picture is based on how nice that big old tube monitor is and then a couple others you may see MRI and ultrasound um, MRI is not really used all that much for body composition because of its access or its accessibility as well as the cost of it but MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging you would be put in a tube where you get essentially a magnet spun all the way around you taking paper thin slices of your body and that will give in turn can give you your body composition that way ultrasound I've actually done myself and this is where you take an ultrasound device and you will measure different areas of your body this is actually really good for measuring regional body fat percentage So, like if you wanted to know what your body composition was of like say your thighs you can do this pretty easily with ultrasound it's not so great with me measuring global body composition unless you actually did this over your whole body but that does take some time there and some doing but it's actually really good with measuring regional composition so that's everything I wanted to get through here today so that's your little overview here into body composition and how we're going to measure it when we come back next time we're going to dive a, a lot more in depth into how we actually measure your body fat percentage and body composition. So until next time, I will see you all later.